I was on a personal quest to find where I needed to be. Went up to Washington and then down the Oregon coast and my grandparents asked me to house it for them for two weeks. And I thought it was a grand idea. So I came and, and was helping them out with that. And during that two weeks, my van broke down and been here for 22 years now. And I can help you right here. Actually, Summer and I were sitting on the couch talking about what we should call the video store. And all we could think of was how we'd sit on the couch and criticize the movies we were watching. I think part of the idea too was uh, the old guys from The Muppet Show that sit up in the balcony and uh, talk smack the whole time. So the name Couch Critics kind of rolled out and pretty much we've been going with that ever since. But people constantly call it everything else besides what it actually is. Couch Potatoes, Couch Critters, Couch Crickets, <laughs> Crotch Critics. Uh, that was pretty brilliant, actually. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, uh, we'll be open just a little bit after noon. Uh huh. But when I opened it up, you know, there's always a story like, people told me I was crazy. Because there was three other video stores. There was the one that I worked at for a couple years, which was called Debut Video. We always called it Debut. So that's funnier. And then there was Video Village. And then there was the uh, video department at Rays. With Elijah's help, we figured out all the stuff that wasn't being represented in town. And we wanted to be different where when you ask someone for a movie recommendation, the person actually knows what they're talking about. Instead of, I don't know, I just work here. It's completely unacceptable but I do have extra boxes. These are becoming rare. They're both from Blockbuster, or Cockblocker, or Lackluster, as I used to call them. <laughs> I outlasted you, so good. Actually, it became quite successful, and all the other video stores eventually closed down. But the nice thing is that the dog didn't chew up the discs, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, we were calling him Doc for a while, and then he was doing this thing and he wasn't watching where he was going. He just slammed into one of the racks and knocked all the movies down. <laughs> His name is Crashy Von Pulski, also known as Crash or Dog. Sit. <laughs> There's this movie with this guy and uh, he's on another planet. And, you know, and then I have to try and guess and then run and find where the movie is. Fun part of my career. I try to memorize everyone's phone number, <laughs> but that uh, that way lies madness, literally, I believe. All right, take care. And then I was able, remembering people's names, to remember things about them. And so I became more, I guess, personable or relatable. So, you know, like in The Prisoner. I'm not a number, I'm a free man. Who are you? You are number six. I am not a number. I am a free man. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you can Google things. That's fine and it works really well, but there's all kinds of interesting things that come from, as you know, tangents. <laughs> and you can't tangent with Google. They can offer some suggestions to other things, but it seems sterilized. Something that's missing from, from that that you get from a human interaction. It's proximity alert. That's one of the things that Kelly and really digs. It's all, hey James, will you make the uh, Millennium Falcon make noises? I see kids come in who remind me of myself when I was little and, and discovering new um, superheroes or you know, stuff like that. So I can kind of tune in with them, find out what they're interested in, and then use a memory of what I had collected or read or seen to 
kind of give them a variant of that experience. It's a witch. Are those gloves tough to pick things up? <laughs> That's one of my favorite parts too. <laughs> Can you put that on for a second? Can I put this on for a second? Is it on right? Yeah. Oops. But if you press this, then it changes your voice. Does my voice sound different now? No. Underestimate the power of the dark side. Watching TBS as a kid, I saw the most amazing film that combined all the things that I really loved genre wise called Red Sun, and it was three samurai traveling across the United States by train with an ancient sword as a peace offering from Japan. And then they are attacked uh, by bandits. Uh, the leader is Elaine Delon, who's a super awesome uh, French actor. And then also Charlie Bronson, who I love as well. It's like, they're too so badass. So all of them are in one movie. So we have samurais and cowboys and French bandits. And then you have the first Bond girl who made my heart flutter at the time. And they just were awesome. And Toshiro had these amazing sideburns. And it's just like, I'm gonna have sideburns like that one day. So it reminded me of like a combo of old Japanese and Scottish guy all at once. <laughs> if you work here, you have to work on your handwriting <laughs> instead of having an application for people to fill out. Um, I had them give me a handwritten resume uh, so that I could see their handwriting. I had a friend who uh, did uh, handwriting analysis also, so he could give me a little peek into the person's psyche to some degree. Um, I set it up like that because at the time when things were really rolling, late charges were a really big deal. And so there's a lot of people who would say, I, I didn't have that movie late. And there's that great series that Tim Roth did called Lie to Me. It was about a guy who's a human lie detector. There's all these like, face twitches and things that people do uh, when they lie. And um, I noticed that having that thing down, I just put it up there for fun and just for a little reminder. And I noticed that people who were lying to me would not be able to stop looking at it. Their eyes kept going down to the thing that said, tell the truth. Like their brain was short circuiting that <laughs> they were lying. So we started watching this and Finn's like, oh, that's where you get it. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's all, you're, anytime you're working and messing around or something like that, you go, hey, what do you need? <laughs> it's uh, whenever Curly's like doing something where he has concentrated, like, sings this little song. Bad guys of World War II. We can't send out their radio signal because Curly screwed up the place. Uh, my system is so old that computer guy had to actually create a whole, like, sub-program just to run it. So they had to create this like pocket dimension within the computer framework just to run that thing. Yeah. And I can help you right here. James, t uh, t uh, tell me, what are you doing? You have a video shop and where, where is it and what's its name? Yes, uh, it's called Couch Critics Movies and Games. It goes all the way back into there. It's a pretty big store. Yeah, I think it's about 1,400 square feet. Okay. Yeah, back here we have the drama and the action and the superheroes. And then our wall over here was all uh, TV. And this is the, um, the founder of the store. He started up in... Um, in 1975 and he was uh he was uh he worked in a photo store 
and he sold a millimeter uh, films and he also rented them to friends but without uh, taking money for it and then one day he he charged his friends for renting them and that's how it um, he started the business and this room is is very interesting because this used to be a showroom in the 1970s for yeah super 8 films for adults oh adult films it was a hole in the wall and legend has it that he had his projector here and the people sat inside this very small room <laughs> and watched wow i i guess porn films <laughs> so and that was the secret of his success yeah <laughs> i guess so we wanted to do it a little different so we <clears throat> we asked the professor for pornography just to make a curation of movies with the best porn films of the time, I guess. And you have the red light in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that film? Let's see. <laughs> no, but that looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, this is really great. It's from the it's from the director of Deep Throat. It's really a great film. The music is from the guy who made the movie um, a theme for Terminator. <laughs> It's a Muppet movie, actually. M Muppet erotica? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not very erotic. <laughs> you know, the the guys who um, used to uh, finance the store uh, by renting porn films, they all died, you know? They were oh. all 80 and beyond. And we had a lot of customers who came regularly, but they, yeah, they disappeared. <laughs> So, so now we do it more like um, for people who do uh, scientific research. Uh, yeah, and then we tell them the film funding that we have a um, scientific approach and that we they can give us the money and we we won't do anything strange with it. See, since we last filmed, we were teetering, and now we've toppled. <laughs> um, I just didn't want to, to go into debt any more than was absolutely necessary. And try as I might to change things around, it just isn't a good business model anymore, or relevant. So... Do you have a... Depardieu okay. movie that's about music. It's a porn. It's a porn film. I went on I IMDb and I couldn't find it. Um, Paul said to ask you if you've got this film. Maybe Depardieu. it takes place in nature. I don't know. But it's Depardieu. Gerard. Yeah. So everything's uh, for sale. Yeah. And what is the price on it? Around five bucks, unless it's something that's okay. you know super out there. A lot of people. Um, getting rid are getting rid of their physical copy of a film. Yeah. You know they're trusting that the internet or the Amazon or wherever they get their movies digitally from and store their movies digitally, that they're going to be there forever and that they're going to be able to have access to all those things. And they believe that. <laughs> yeah, not everyone's that wise. I think I think that's what what the idea of an of an archive is. That the, the things they are there, you can have them in your hand, and it's they are also people are connected to them. So, hello, he was totally there. He is, he totally, um, all those records, the whole thing, five bucks. All those, yeah, take it, whatever you want, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, the free, free red vines with purchase. No. Really? Yeah, I'll take them. Okay. <laughs> But I did enjoy it a lot. And I think that I can find a way to use the skills I learned here to do something different. As uh, Fred said, the definition of a positive transaction is when both parties benefit. So I've tried to take that to heart with everything. Choo choo. And it's her asshole brother, Bubba. <laughs> she is sweet. Oh, 
Alright, come back.